Um, Welcome. It is so good to see everyone. We are going to go ahead and get started here. Just, I'm going to have a couple more people I see on my screen joining. It is so good to see everyone. Two years we've been waiting for this. Some of you had job changes, name changes, babies, grade level changes, and here we are two years later ready to celebrate and honor your work. And we can't be, we couldn't be more excited about this. So welcome. Uh, I am Cindy Catchman, and I will be the MC today for Region 1 Kansas Teacher of the Year. I'm going to get started in just a second. I've got one more person that looks like waiting to join, and I don't want to leave anyone out. So if you would please make sure that you are, uh, uh, you have your videos on, we would love to see your faces. So please, please turn your video face, your, turn your videos on. All right, can, um, Carmen, can you see the welcome page to the 22 Kansas Teacher of the Year? We are ready to go then. Awesome. Well, welcome. As I said, um, I'm your MC. I'm the, for the Region 1 Kansas Teacher of the Year recognition program today. We are celebrating some of the top educators in Region 1. Not only are these teachers revered in their own schools, but also in your district and now in our region. If you would like to access the online program, please visit this Google site on the slide. It's sites.google.com backslash view backslash KTOY region one backslash home. There you can follow along and read all about our, our top nominee educators in region one. And we would love for you to follow along. Let's see if I can get this slide to move. There we go. Our Kansas Teacher of the Year nominees are honored today with recognition and continued activities planned by KSDE's Denise Kaler and Tamala Miller. These opportunities include professional learning, networking with other outstanding educators, visiting school districts as part of a regional team, and attending the Kansas Teacher of the Year Leadership Conference in September, and attending the State Awards Banquet in Sept on September 25th. And as was shared in the chat earlier, this is a fantastic, fantastic opportunity to make new friends and visit other school districts to learn. By being nominated and completing the application process, each of you are now members of KEEN, the Kansas Exemplary Educators Network. This network is comprised of award-winning, exceptional educators in our state, just like you. A special thank you um, to our local administrators and our school board members. Without your support, the nominations would not be possible. So thank you. 
We are also pleased to recognize and have the support of our Kansas State Board of Education members. Region one state board, um, edu region one state board representatives and members who represent Kansas region one areas are district four, Mrs. Ann Ma, district five, Mrs. Jean Clifford, and district six, Dr. Dina Horst, and district seven, Mr. Ben Jones. Thank you to all of our state board members. Um, without your dedication and your support of education in the state of Arkansas, this wouldn't be possible. I now want to bring attention to the major contributors who make this event possible. Each of the following contributors, contributors honor our Region 1 nominees, six semifinalists, and two finalists. Our corporate sponsor is Security Benefit, which you will hear more about later in our program. These patrons have contributed either financially or through in-kind gifts, the Kansas National Education Association, the Oriental Trading Company, and Master Teacher. A special thank you to our friends who have contributed their time and energy, McPherson and Eisenhower fifth graders, the Central Christian College Teacher Education Program, and ESDAC. A special thank you to USD 313 Bueller for their programs and the Kansas State Department of Education IT department, Kathy Grossenberger, Eric Diener, and Nathan Whedon. The Clay Works of McPherson, who will be providing a small token of appreciation and gift for you that you'll receive in September. Each region, each, each regional Kansas Teacher of the Year event is organized by a volunteer group of educators. This team works to honor our profession by recognizing teaching excellence in our region. The 2022 Region 1 planning team is Amelia Adams from Liberal, April Baugh from Dodge City, myself from Bueller, Ashley Eckleberry from Manhattan Ogden, Toby Henline from Hutchison, Candy Williams from Wamigo, and Carmen Seisler at ESDAC. This team will be introducing our nominees very, very soon. I'm going to go ahead and stop screen share here for just a second so we can see all of your nominee faces um, on screen. So please, please make sure your video is on so your family and friends across the state and the, and the, and the nation maybe can see your faces. It's so good to see everyone. As mentioned earlier, Security Benefit is a Topeka-based retirement savings and income company. It is our chief corporate partner for the Kansas Teacher of the Year program. Since 2000, the company has made an annual contribution of $28,000 to this program, totally more than $500,000. Can you imagine that? Give them a round of applause. That's a virtual applause. A half a million dollars to the Kansas Teacher of the Year program, honoring educators in the state of Kansas. These funds are used to provide cash awards of $2,000 to each of the eight finalists, a cash award of an additional $4,000 to the Kansas Teacher of the Year, and a donation of $2,000 to each of these four regions to help underwrite award celebration costs. The company employees are very involved in the program too. It's not just a monetary donation. They serve on the Kansas Foundation for Excellence and Education's Board of Directors. They serve on the Kansas Teacher of the Year Steering Committee and our State Selection Committee. That's amazing. The time and energy and monetary investment into this program is phenomenal. We are thankful to have Mark Carr, the Assistant Vice President with Security Benefit with us today on this Zoom. He has been with Security Benefit for 16 years and currently manages the Western Division internal sales team. Mark began his career as an analyst with the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City and has 23 years of experience in the financial services industry. Prior to joining Security Benefit, Mark served as the Regional Vice President in General Electric's Long-Term Care Division, as well as Travel's Annuity Division. Mark and his wife, Maria, reside in Topeka and they have three children. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Carr. Round of applause. Welcome, Mark. Well, good afternoon, everyone. 
It's a thrill to be here. I have to say the only downside is I didn't get a drive through the Flint Hills today, which is always fun for me. Um, you know, they're real pretty from Topeka to Manhattan, but once you get past Manhattan towards Salina, they're ever, even prettier. So I, I realized that on my trip to Salina before. You know, it's an honor to be here representing security benefit and our commitment to teachers. You know, on behalf of the entire company, I want to offer our sincere congratulations to the 2022 Kansas Teacher of the Year Region 1 nominees. Teachers who love teaching teach children to love learning. At Security Benefit, we have a strong workforce of more than 1,500 talented associates, thanks to teachers at all levels. We have young professionals following their dreams. We have women rising to the top of male-dominated fields. We have bright minds whose ideas are transforming the industry, all thanks to the inspiration of those who taught us all to love learning. Good teachers know how to bring out the best in students and the Kansas Department of Education and the Teacher of the Year program certainly know how to bring out the best teachers. Today's nominees and all the teachers represent the best of Kansas playing critical roles in preparing our youth to become responsible and contributing citizens in a national and global community. We at Security Benefit appreciate the power of teachers and are really fortunate to have strong partnerships with both the NEA and the KNEA. We are proudly focused on solving the retirement needs of educators for over 50 years. I speak for all of my colleagues when I say congratulations to the nominees and thank you for your commitment, passion, and dedication to preparing young minds for the future. Enjoy the event. Thank you for having me be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Security Benefit, for their continued support of the Teacher of the Year program. Um, we can't honor you enough without you guys. Um, it wouldn't be the quality of program it is for sure. So thank you, Mark. And and, and, and although you didn't get to travel, we hope to see you next year <laughs> and, and, and where you're traveling and seeing you in person. Sounds great. Thank, Thank you, you, Mark. Thank you. Well, our next speaker um, almost needs no introduction as he has dedica dedicated his tenure as Kansas commissioner to forming relationships with educators across our state in the pursuit of Kansas leading the world and the success of each student. In fact, most of us probably have met him and know him and feel like um, feel like we're his friends. Dr. Randy Watson was named the Kansas Commissioner of Education by the Kansas State Board of Education and assumed his role in July 2015. As the state's chief Edu education officer, he provides leadership to the Kansas State Department of Education in carrying out the policies and programs prescribed by the State Board of Education to ensure the necessary oversight and support is provided to assist Kansas schools, educators, and our students in achieving their goals. The recipient of many awards, Dr. Watson was named an alumni fellow at Kansas State University and in 2015 was honored by being named the Kansas Superintendent of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Randy Watson. Hey, okay, here's what you do when you're being introduced, you know, from a great person like Cindy. I'm scanning, I'm doing like the Brady Bunch scan and I'm pulling up every one of you on my screen because I'm just like, I'm, I know Tabitha feels the same way. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just want to be there with you in person, you know, because I, I get there, you know, I get to Salina like at nine in the morning and just run around and, and be so excited. So I've been doing that today, you know, it's, I just can't wait. So here's the promise. Here's the promise, all right? We're here to honor winners today. I don't like the word nominee. These are winners today, right? And you're already thinking, hey, hey, I'm not even the best teacher in my pod. Well, get over that, all right? We're here to, we're here to shout out to all of you, all right? And to spend some time, but, but I'm, I'm really thinking this fall when we get to honor the Kansas Teacher of the Year uh, and that team uh, formally, uh, we're going to be in person. That is, well, I mean, we're going to we're going to do everything we can to be in person, and you all need to come, all right? 
because we need to do that. We're going to do this right today and we're going to do it right again then. And we're going to do it at the Keen Conference and we're going to continue to honor you in any way that we can. Um, I mean, just just think about this. Just about one year ago, one year ago, I made a, just a few phone calls over a weekend to many of you on this screen and said, hey, we might want to think about getting together because uh, if you haven't noticed, things are really moving rapidly and things are shutting down across the country. And that Monday morning, we closed schools for the rest of the school year. And in 48 hours, you guys turned it around with a document called Continuous Learning that was hailed across the country as the most remarkable document. And then we shut schools down and you taught remotely for the whole year. And you said, oh my gosh, is this hard, right? I, I, what's, what's this thing called Zoom? You know, and, and then, you know, you know the Zoom, we're gonna probably experience this sometime today where we do this, right? The Zoom robot, right? It's the 1970s version of the dance, the robot, where, where you just freeze or, you know, your kids, you can't engage your kids. And that's what we experience in the spring. And it was just like, we, you, you took this, that challenge and you just turned everything around and you just made it work so well for students and families. And we kept thinking, man, it's gonna be, it's gonna be better in August. And, they, and then guess what? It wasn't, it wasn't better. So over the summer, you got together and produced a document called Navigating Change. And so let's think about this even deeper and, and, and better. And, and again, that document, award-winning, done by over 400 Kansas teachers. And then we brought another group of medical people in and another group before long, we're up to almost a thousand people. And then you were like, that's a great document, but what the heck happened? I was teaching remotely. Now I got to teach in-person hybrid remotely. Am I on the AB schedule? No, not today. We switched it, right? All of those things have been going on over just, the last 12 months, much less, am I supposed to wear a mask? Did I forget to take my temperature when I came in? Oh my gosh, you know, and then if you're teaching the early kids, you know, they're sneezing in their mask. That's really fun, isn't it? That's just, that. that's really, you've done all that in one single year. And you've had the energy to do that. And you've had the stamina and you've had the drive and the expertise to do that. So on behalf of the state board, and I mean this sincerely when, when I say this, because it's been so true, I see the work that you've done. The state board has seen the work that you've done every single day. Because throughout this pandemic, Kansas education stayed the course for only one reason, you. You showed up every day. You brought your A game every day. You addressed every challenge that this pandemic laid out before you. You shut out everything else for your students and families and just helped them focus. There were days that you didn't know if you could give any more, and yet you did. You never gave up. You never wavered one second. So this afternoon, we're here to honor you, to deeply honor you, to see what your district sees in you, that leadership, that passion, that talent. And we're here to say thank you. It's, it's not enough. It's not enough for the work that you've done this year and for your entire career, but it's what we have to give to you today is thank you. Thank you for doing this wonderful work. And with that, there's a lady that I've come to know really well. You already know her really well. Tabitha Rossbroy. You know, Tabitha teaches preschool in USD 465 in Winfield at the Winfield Early Learning Center. And uh, her special program is, is uh, housed in the uh, Cumberland Village. It's a local retirement village in Winfield where it's an intergenerational classroom that provides preschoolers and their residents this remarkable experience. 
So her program serves at-risk students, special ed students, uh, typical four-year-old uh, preschoolers, and uh, it's just a remarkable, energetic place where the residents and the students get to interact every day. You know, Tabitha says often, both populations benefit from this partnership. And if you've ever been there, you would certainly say not just benefit, they thrive with that partnership. Tabitha is active in her building leadership team. She's the co-ed teacher of the Winfield Early Learning Center. She serves as the co-president of the Winfield NEA, and she's very active at the state level with KNEA. You know, also in her spare time, Tabitha is part of the Cali County Special Services Cooperative Early Learning Academic Team. Uh, she provides training for other teachers uh, in this state in her decade of teaching. She has learned that before you teach the academics, you got to have a lot of love and social emotional education. She prioritizes that every single day in that classroom. I want you to think about this. 1962. 1962. Even for you old people like me, that's a long time ago. All right. That was the last time we had a state teacher of the year that was became the national teacher of the year. And guess what? There's never been a national teacher of the year that was a pre-K educator until Tabitha Rossboy blew open that door. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you not only a rock star in Winfield, the Kansas State Teacher of the Year, the National Teacher of the Year, Tabitha Rossboy. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. Oh my gosh, you are like the best hype person. You really are. Randy, he does it for all teachers too. This is not just for me. This is for all educators. We are so glad to have Randy as our state chief. I am so excited to be with all of you here today. I know that it feels a little different being online versus in person, but I also know that we are moving in the right direction to be in person again so soon. And I can't wait for that moment we can, when I can hug all of your necks, um, celebrate with you together. But right now, I'm just elated to see your smiling faces um, and just to be amongst your greatness. You know, you have made it a full year in one of the most challenging times in our world's history. You have had to change so much, you have had to worry so much, and you've had to be more adaptive and flexible than I think any of us ever expected when we came fresh out of college ready to be teachers. Your unwavering dedication has not gone unnoticed. I am so proud to be a Kansas educator, and I'm proud because I get to work alongside of all of you. You know, I remember this time a year or two ago on my way up to the Region 4 banquet. Um, I remember the nerves and the excitement, the absolute terror at the idea that I was going to have to maybe speak <laughs> in front of some people. But what I didn't know was that no matter the outcome, I was going to be a part of something so special and so unique and so wonderful that it would shape my life forever. No matter the names we call as finalists today, every single educator here is about to enter into a lifetime of friendship and joy with teachers across the state. You know, I had probably 20 text messages this morning from teachers across the state talking about how special it would be to be together in person right now, but how excited they were to be um, together in this way, to be watching the live stream. People who were teacher of the year or finalist or on the team years ago, still here to support you today because that's the kind of family that it is. And Kansas is unique in this. Now that I know teachers and programs across the country, it is so easy to see that the Kansas Teacher of the Year program is of the highest caliber in our nation. So I encourage you to take part in the Fall Leadership Conference and every event that you can because you have the incredible opportunity to connect with the greatness of other educators in our state and the opportunity to shine light on your home district too. And that word connect has been the word that my team has focused on this last year and a half. And the patron Saint Brene Brown says, connection is why we're here. It's what gives purpose and meaning to our lives. She is so right. And after this year, we all know how important and powerful that connection can be. I hope that you don't take a single opportunity for that connection for granted. 
So on behalf of myself, the Region 1 finalist from 2020, Stephanie Lane and Sean Hornig, we congratulate you on this honor and we welcome all of you to the K-Toy family. You know, we're kind of letting go of a title today, but we're gaining so much more and we can't wait to connect with you for years to come. So don't get tired of us yet. Thank you so much for my invitation to be here today. I'm excited to turn it back over to Cindy and get to hearing about how incredible all of you are. Thank you, thank you, Tabitha. You've been a shining light for educators and students, not only in Kansas, but our entire nation. Thank you for your year of service. And now you're right. It's time, it's what we're all here for, right? It is time for our distinguished nominees to be honored and recognized. I'm telling you, I don't know about you guys, but I was so excited and nervous. And I think some of you were too, because I started getting texts this morning and emails saying, I can't find my link. I don't know how to get on. Oh my gosh, where is it at? Who did it come from? Um, so I know that you're nervous and excited just like we are and you should be because this is about honoring you. In alphabetical order, we are going to be reading our elementary nominees first, followed by the names of our secondary nominees. So please, please turn your cameras on so we can all see you when the time is, when, when your friends and family across the nation and state can see you. So if you're an elementary nominee, make sure your video is turned on. The Region 1 planning team will now introduce our special honorees and themselves, and um, we'll then share a video of you all. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Carmen Zeisler, and I'm the director of the ESDAC Learning Centers. Um, I am honored to, um, to introduce this first round of elementary nominees. Janae Basinger is part of the USD 305 family and teaches fifth grade at Houston Elementary School in Salina, Kansas. She believes that given the right environment, high consistent expectations, and supportive relationships, students are provided the best opportunity to thrive. While observing her classroom, you would notice there is a strong sense of connectivity and students are up and moving engaged in their learning. Peggy Barrows teaches kindergarten through second grade music at West Elementary School for USD 352. Miss, Mrs. Barrows works hard to include each and every student in her classes, giving them opportunities to create and enjoy music. She loves to plan music programs that excite her students and give each student an opportunity to participate with a special speaking part or instrumental part. Lori Bishop is currently teaching fourth grade at Walnut Elementary School for USD 253. Miss Bishop's adventures have taken her to Missouri, Virginia, Texas, and Emporia, where she has been since 2010. She has learned a lot teaching various grade levels and subject areas. While she was in Dallas, she taught sixth grade and learned greatly from the experiences she had working with her coworkers and the at-risk student population. Courtney Blywing has taught at the Hutchison Public School District for 15 years. She is currently teaching fifth grade at Morgan Elementary. Courtney effortlessly builds lasting relationships, instills the love of learning, and can often be heard laughing with her students in room 202. Aubrey Books teaches special education K-1 at Roosevelt Elementary for USD 489. She typically works with students that have developmental display, delays, learning disabilities, or those diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. She is devoted to meeting all needs of children by offering academic, social, motor, and daily living supports. Desiree Brown teaches music at Sheridan Elementary School in USD 475. A love for learning and joy of music has been part of her life for as long as she can remember. She believes the connection between families, community, and school sets the foundation for the most powerful learning experience. Ms. Brown believes that, all, that 
arts education is one of the best ways to build those strong connections and is driven to find new ways to build and create. Sarah Dremberski teaches fifth, sixth grade special education math at Charles Stone Intermediate Center for USD 457. She works hard every day to make sure all students feel comfortable and welcomed at school. You might find her wearing the school mascot outfit so that she can help welcome and greet students. Ashley Eckleberry teaches special education at Northview Elementary for USD 383 in Manhattan, Kansas. Ashley believes that every student has a right to a learning environment that truly meets the diverse preferences, addresses their struggles, and nurtures their strengths. Hello, everybody. My name is Toby Henline, and I teach theater at Hutchinson Public High Schools. Uh, I am honored to introduce the next round of elementary nominees. Ms. Jessica Geist, USD 428, Great Bend. Jessica teaches sixth grade at Lincoln Elementary School. She believes her students deserve the best, so she continually seeks ways to develop her instruction to advance student learning. Her classroom is driven by high expectations, both for her students and herself. Mrs. Rachel Harder, USD Rachel teaches fourth grade at Union Valley Elementary School. She is an advocate for authentic literacy practices, as well as a strong believer in getting the right books into students' hands. In addition, she is the co-founder and organizer of Nerd Camp Kansas, a literacy-focused conference for educators and students across the country. Mrs. Jamie Harrington, USD 220, Ashland. Jamie teaches fifth grade at Ashland Junior Senior High School. Her classroom environment promotes a sense of belonging, creativity, and growth. She focuses on helping her students balance more strenuous academics and responsibilities with navigating the sometimes rough social and emotional waters of pre-adolescence. Mrs. Julie Hickman, USD 214, Ulysses. Julie teaches second grade at Hickok Elementary School. She loves making connections with her students, seeing them grow and succeed, and the creative opportunities that teaching provides. Mrs. Jennifer Kessler, USC 271 Stockton. Jennifer teaches second grade at Stockton Grade School. She is an active member of many committees in her district. She serves as a member of the Curriculum Council, the Student Improvement Team, the Professional Development Committee, Kansas Education Systems Accreditation Team, and serves as Relationships with students fosters academic achievement. A strong relationships with students fosters academic achievement. We're gonna un, we're gonna Mrs. we're gonna Crystal redo that because Nelson. I don't want anybody to miss. So hold on a second. Pike Valley fosters academic achievement. Building it teaches fifth grade reading and social studies at Concordia Middle School. She believes that a nurturing classroom and building strong relationships with students fosters academic achievement. Mrs. Crystal Nelson, USD 426, Pike Valley. Crystal teaches kindergarten at Pike Valley Elementary School. She strives to offer a wide range of teaching techniques to reach all students in her classroom. 
She works with the other school personnel to help make sure her students set a strong foundation for their first educational experience. Ms. Beth Neusser, USC 405 Lions. Beth teaches early childhood special education at Park Elementary School. During her time as parents as teacher's educator, she realized her desire to teach preschool for special needs students. Her classroom consists of four-year-old community preschool members, along with three and four-year-old students with special needs. And good afternoon. I am Candy Williams, and I am a third grade teacher at West Elementary in Wamego, Kansas. It is an honor to introduce the final round of elementary nominees. Ms. Jessica Guy. Mrs. Sarah Razak, USD 418 McPherson. Sarah teaches fourth grade at Washington Elementary School where she has taught for the last 18 years. She has a strong belief that success in education is about building strong relationships with students in her classroom. She is passionate about helping those with trauma as well as educating others on how to teach students who have experienced trauma. Congratulations, Sarah. Ms. Suzanne Stevenson, USD 443 Dodd City. Suzanne is currently serving as a fourth grade teacher at Beeson Elementary School. She has a love of working with bilingual and newcomer students. Her passion for equal opportunities and high standards of achievement for all students drove her to further her education so she could better serve the diverse community in the school. Congratulations. Kendra Stoppel, USD 466, Scott City. Kendra is a first grade teacher at Scott City Elementary. A veteran of 20 years, she has spent the last eight years in first grade. She wrote her sixth grade career research paper on being a teacher and has not veered from that path since. She gives her whole heart to her craft and her students with the goal of them leaving her, cl her classroom knowing that she they were cared for and realizing their passion for learning new things. She loves to collaborate with her team and talk shop with other educators. Congratulations. Mrs. Krista Thomas, USD 379 Clay Center. Krista is a K through five reading specialist for Wakefield Elementary. Krista believes that every child is wired for connection and that it is her goal to build relationships and connect with every student that enters her door. She believes that every student deserves a passionate educator that cares and aims to connect with them each and every day. Congratulations, Krista. Mrs. Claire Thompson, USD 480 Liberal. Claire is a kindergarten through fifth grade general music teacher at Prairie View Elementary. Claire is dedicated to providing the best music education possible for all of her students and strives to find new and exciting ways to reach her students. Prairie View is a Title I dual language school where students learn daily in English and Spanish. Claire is a tru truly a phenomenal teacher who reaches her students daily, connects with families, and shares her passion for music and students in her school and across the country. Congratulations. Mrs. Molly Townsend, USD 320 Flamigo. Molly is a fifth grade teacher at West Elementary School. She loves seeing students grow and learn throughout their final year in elementary. She believes in each child she teaches and strives to engage students and lead them to take ownership in their learning. Molly's love for her students is made evident in the relationship she forges with her students and the dedication with which she has for both teaching and student excellence in her classroom. Molly models the necessary balance between student accountability for achievement and also the social emotional well being of the whole child. This is no easy task in today's standards based educational world. However, Molly demonstrates that it is indeed possible to do both. Congratulations. Mrs. Deb Weedle, USD 309 Nickerson. Deb is a Title I math instructor at South Hutchison Elementary. She never wants to waste a minute. She walks in the doors of her building ready to make a difference in her students. You can see the impact it has on her students because they hang on to her every word and they also look forward to going to her classroom. 
Her intensity is addicting and students crave making progress in hearing her encouragement. She's the type of teacher that you would want every student to experience. Congratulations, Dick. Ms. Kayla Unger, USD 105, Rollins County. Kayla is currently teaching Title I math and reading as well as K through third grade PE at Rollins County. She is in her 25th year of teaching. The majority of that has been in elementary physical education. Kayla is driven and organized and believes in developing inspiring relationships with her students. Her ability to connect with her students and her talent at teaching PE are both truly superior. Because of Kayla, no child is left behind, forgotten, or unloved in her presence. She helps students see their own potential even when they do not know their potential exists. Congratulations. Well, congratulations to all of our elementary district teachers of the year. A round of applause for them, you all. This is amazing. We have like 49 nominees in region one and it's almost split um, exactly half elementary and half secondary. Congratulations to our elementary district teachers of the year. We celebrate your excellence. Next, we're going to meet our secondary nominees. So if you're a secondary nominee, please be sure your video is turned on. We want to see your smiling faces and honor you. And, um, so we can look at you why we honor you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for turning that on. And so now we will, um, our team will be introducing our secondary um, round of nominees. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams and I teach Spanish at Liberal High School. And it is my honor to introduce our first set of secondary nominees. This is Sarah. We're getting there, I promise. <laughs> Shane on. Shane Austin, USD 271 Stockton, Stockton High School, 23 years teaching. Shane teaches agriculture education. He views teaching as an ever-changing process where one must stay flexible and able to evolve with every set of students that comes through his program. Thank you, Shane, for creating young leaders. Amanda Ballard. Emporia High School, 17 years teaching. Amanda teaches speech, dual credit classes, and AVID. She believes it is her responsibility to fill the gap so that every student that enters her classroom has their needs met in order for them to not only overcome obstacles. I understand you're not seeing the screen. <laughs> you would like to see those. I say we want to celebrate you and then I don't share the right screen, right? And I know that, you know how I know that is because my wonderful friends and nominees and Dr. Watson are all watching out for us and my phone is lit up. Let me tell you, I had like five missed phone calls. I'm getting texts. I'm getting te like something is obviously wrong with my technology. So thank you all for um, notifying me. We want to make sure we're doing this right to honor you. And besides that, we get to hear Amelia's lovely voice again. So I will try this again. So thank you for being patient with me. Let's see if we can't share the right screen and get this going. And so if make sure I'm doing this right, can I get a thumbs up? Does it show Shane Austin right off the bat? There we go. Here we go again. Thank you all. Shane Austin, USD 271 Stockton, Stockton High School, 23 years teaching. Shane teaches agriculture education. He views teaching as an ever-changing process where one must stay flexible 
and able to evolve with every set of students that comes through his program. Thank you, Shane, for creating Young Leaders. Amanda Ballard, Emporia High School, 17 years teaching. Amanda teaches speech, dual credit classes, and AVID. She believes it is her responsibility to fill the gap so that every student that enters her classroom has their needs met in order for them to not only overcome obstacles, but also confront them with resolve. Anne Boss, USD 403, Otis Bison Junior Senior High School, 25 years teaching. Anne teaches Spanish one through four, ESOL, and virtual learning classes. Anne believes the one team member that will determine whether a student succeeds or fails in the classroom is the teacher. And the single most important position that we as teachers can play is to be a role model for our students. Mitzi Becker, USD 214, Ulysses High School, 26 years teaching. Mitzi teaches English language arts, forensics and ACT prep. She believes that educators give their hearts, their energy, and their passion to help students maneuver in a world that is confusing and traumatic. It is the teacher's responsibility to make students feel safe, important, and valued. Chris Brooks, USD 480, Liberal High School, seven years teaching. Chris teaches US history, conflicts in history, and college US history. His passion for teaching is infectious and his students know that he is genuine. Chris has a strong belief that if students can make a personal connection with what is being taught, they will be able to apply those valuable lessons to their own lives. Amber Carruthers, USD 308, Hutchinson High School, seven years teaching. Amber teaches English language arts. She prioritizes which delivers not only knowledge, but also grace and compassion. Her classroom is a safe place for all students. She believes in teaching a whole student intellectually and emotionally. Amber is a firm believer in constant improvement and strives to model this growth through her classroom leadership. Andrew Cherry, USD 355, Ellenwood High School, 12 years teaching. Andrew teaches physical education. He has made it a priority to develop relationships with his students. Andrew has made a positive impact on the students in his classroom through his enthusiastic attitude, work ethic, and complete love for his profession and the people who connect with him on a daily basis. Melanie Falcon, USD 400, Smoky Valley Middle School, 13 years teaching. Melanie teaches seventh and eighth grade science. She believes in order to truly become successful, one must learn how to fail. Learn from your mistakes and move on. Take what you've learned and press forward to achieving that next goal. Learning doesn't only occur within the walls of a school or classroom. Everyone should be open-minded, enough to allow it to be a lifelong opportunity. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ashley Eckleberry. I teach special education remotely. I'm at Northview Elementary in Manhattan Ogden, USD 383, and I will be announcing our next group of secondary nominees. Thank you. Mr. Greg Fraze, USD 313, Bueller. Greg teaches secondary ELA classes at Bueller High School. He strives to deepen each student's learning through a discussion-based environment, showcasing student voice throughout the process. Fostering a love of learning and seeing students move on to become educators is the highlight and continued goal in Greg's teaching career. Mrs. Kelly Holting, USD 330, Mission Valley. Kelly teaches 9th through 12th grade agriculture education at Mission Valley High School. 
her agriculture program offers students a broad introduction into agriculture across grades. Kelly has also been a cooperating teacher for teaching interns, as well as a mentor for first-year agriculture education teachers in Kansas. Mr. Shane Holleran, USC 352, Goodland. Shane teaches junior high social studies, but has also taught Kansas history as well as geography. He prides himself in making school enjoyable for every student that enters into his classroom and stresses the importance of maintaining a positive relationship with his students. His classroom culture starts with love and then moves on to content. Mrs. Tracy Lebo, USD 379, Clay County. Tracy teaches art, career, and technical education at Clay Center Community High School. She's an advocate for the fine and graphic arts and has sponsored many art workshops, shows, and tours of galleries across Kansas. Tracy also trains teachers in technology and has presented on fine arts and technology. Mr. Greg McGlynn, USD 418 McPherson. Greg currently teaches theater arts at McPherson High School. He's the sponsor and director for the McPherson High School Thespian Troupe. He also serves as one of the international adjudicators for the International Thespian Society. Mrs. Laura Miller, USD 475, Geary County Schools. Laura teaches 9th through 12th grade agriculture education at Junction City High School. She believes in learning by doing. Hands-on activities, discussions, and practical experience help shape the students who come into her classroom. Laura is always ready to help students try new events and practice new skills. Mr. Adam O'Neill, USD 383, Manhattan Ogden. Adam teaches world history at Manhattan High School. He focuses on developing autonomous learners who develop reading, writing, questioning, and collaboration strategies they can apply beyond the classroom and field. Adam believes it is his job to help his students gain new opportunities through academics and athletics. Mrs. Lisa Pelton, USD 443, Dodge City Public Schools. Lisa teaches sixth grade science at Dodge City Middle School. She has a passion for learning as well as human students in crisis and trauma situations. She serves on multiple leadership teams, both within her building and district. Hello, my name is April Ball, and I am the health teacher at Comanche Middle School in Dodge City. I am so proud to introduce our final group of secondary nominees. Megan Palmer, USD 305 Salina. Megan teaches sixth grade English language arts and reading at South Middle School. She knew as a little girl she wanted to be just like her mom and be a teacher. Megan's teaching journey has led her to different states as well as different grade books. She is very involved in her school, whether it be the adoption of new textbooks or facilitating a healthy lifestyles group, Megan is always willing to help. Although she has seen behaviors change over the years that require many different educator hats, Megan still wants to be a teacher just like her mom. Wendy Pop, USD 428, Great Bend. Wendy teaches algebra classes at Great Bend High School. Although she currently teaches these courses, in the past, she has also been a counselor. She believes the diversity, diversity in her teaching assignments has shaped her philosophy and practices. Wendy invests in not only her students, who her students are, but also the challenges they face. In her class, students are taught logic and life skills that will aid them in becoming well-rounded contributors to their community. Christy Reed, USD 405, Lyons. Christy currently teaches math in a Holocaust elective class at Lyons Middle School. She loves the small town and the diverse population. Christy enjoys the challenge of creating lessons and building a math classroom full of real world projects. She uses project-based activities to address her standards. In the past, Christy has taught ELA courses and continues this instruction in her Holocaust elective class, where her students engage in activities and discussion that will build empathy and tolerance 
both of which she believes are part of a well-rounded education. Lisa Rents, USD 489 Hayes. Lisa teaches English language arts at Hayes High School. She sets high expectations for herself as well as her students. She will do whatever it takes to help ensure the success of her students. Lisa helps her students to see the relevance of, their, of her subject matter while making it meaningful and manages to build very positive relationships at the same time. As a recent national board certified teacher, Lisa's worth ethic and initiative are second to none. Christy Stout, USC 309 Nickerson. Christy leads Panther Productions at Nickerson High School. She has truly pioneered a new pathway for Nickerson. Her broadcasting classes have grown to the point where over 120 students take part. Each year, these courses have grown in popularity with Christina leading the way. Throughout her career, she has taught many courses, including being a technology integration specialist. She also received her Master's of Education in ESL Curriculum and Instruction. Jean Rundis, USD 333 Concordia. Jean is the at-risk coordinator and teaches English language arts at Concordia Junior and Senior High School. Jean has found that regardless of a district size, there are truths independent of race, gender, and socioeconomic status. He believes that all of his students have potential and deserve the opportunity to grow. Jean also provides student-centered lessons to foster curiosity and responsibility. Brenda Unruh, USD 310, Fairfield. Brenda teaches high school math classes at Fairfield High School. She believes in working hard to make sure each of her students understand math while always keeping her goal of building positive relationships with her students. Brenda also models leadership skills to her students by her involvement in their extracurricular activities. Brenda is also a 2020 Kansas Teachers Hall of Fame inductee. Sarah Wise, USD 457, Garden City. Sarah teaches ELA Kinderson Middle School. She believes in using multiple learning styles and helping students to connect their content, both the, to their current and future ambitions. She has also helped many student teachers in their path towards becoming exceptional educators. While having worked with many ages of students, Sarah simply cannot imagine how boring her life would be without her middle schoolers. Well, those secondary nominees, um, fantastic. Congratulations to you all. Um, your excellent shines. Let's give them a round of applause. We're so excited for you. And now we've all met each other. Um, I'm like, I was listening to all of your, all of your uh, uh, accomplishments and it's just overwhelming. You do such a great job of representing all of what's fantastic about Region 1 Kansas educators. And so this is what we've been waiting for. So before we announce our, uh, uh, our, our semifinalists, can make sure all our nominees have their videos on and Dr. Watson and Tabitha are gonna turn their videos on for sure. And um, we are ready to go. And so now for the announcement of the semifinalists, um, here we go. The three elementary semifinalists will be announced first, followed by the three secondary semifinalists. So Dr. Watson and Tabitha, it's all yours. Whoa, you know, Tabitha and I, Cindy, we, we thought maybe this was going to now be the Zoom version of getting a chicken fried steak because we were so looking forward to that. But I, it, it's a little tough. Look at this. Look at this. So people think that, you know, that Tabitha and I have the inside scoop. I'm going to rip this baby open because we don't know. We're so excited for all of you. It's like it's like the old Funk and Wagner. You know, we, we had to have other people. So. All right, so we've got it open. Captain and I are going to do this together because we've got three semifinalists for the elementary semifinalists. Tabitha, do you have it there in front of you? I All do. Right, I opened mine. Let's, 
let's do it together, Tabitha. Can we do it together? Because yeah, if you're you... on stage, we would okay. be doing it together. You ready? All right. On three. The first one. On three, Tabitha. One, two, three. Rachel, Rachel Harder. Harder <laughs> oh, oh, so excited for you, Rachel. So excited. And now, hey, the anxiety's building, Tabitha. The anxiety's <laughs> building because we have the second one. The second one. We're going to do it again together on three. One, two, three. Suzanne Stevenson. <laughs> so exciting. So exciting. But the excitement continues. We've got our third elementary semifinalist. We're getting on three, Tabitha. Ready? One, two, three. Kendra, Kendra Stoppel. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh, I can hardly stand it. I can hardly stand it. That, is, that was so exciting. Congratulations to all of our elementary semifinalists. But now, Tabitha, we get to go to the secondary. That's right. All right. That's you know that's 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 where I like to hang out. I know Tabitha <laughs> likes the little ones. I like the big ones. All right. That's you know because I taught the big ones. Tabitha teaches the little ones. So that's that's we're, that's why we're tag teaming this. <laughs> so we have three secondary semifinalists, and let's do it again. One, two, three. Amber Rivers. Rivers from Arkansas. <laughs> oh, boom, boom, boom! <laughs> I love that. I love. I love that. Oh, congratulations, Amber. And the second secondary semifinalists for Region One. One, two, three. Christy Reed from Lyons. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's great. That's great. And our last semifinalist, secondary for region one. One, two, three. Lisa Rins. <laughs> Congratulations. What, how exciting. Um, congratulations. Semi-finals, you guys did a great job, uh, Tabitha and Dr. Watson and reading this. Congratulations to our semifinalists. That is, it's so fun. I don't know about you guys, but watching the, the, the gallery when your name got read, um, you were like, oh, I think they just said my name. <laughs> so that's so fun. You don't get to see this when you're in person. See, this is the advantage of Zoom. I got to see everybody all at once and their reactions, whereas um, on a, and if we were in person, we wouldn't have gotten to do that. So that was so fun. Um, so one of these elementary semifinalists and one of these secondary semifinalists that were just named will be selected as a finalist and will represent Region 1 on the Kansas Teacher of the Year team. That's so exciting. Um, and in fact, um, if you are named as a finalist, you are going to be asked to unmute immediately after being announced. So I hope you all three finalists right now, I hope you're all getting ready because this is the exciting part. And we are going to actually spotlight those three semifinalists. So we're gonna have, um, we're gonna be here in just a second. Our KSD friends are gonna be selecting those semifinalists. We're gonna spotlight just the three elementary semifinalists and Dr. Watson and Tabitha, all five of you will be pushed onto our screens. So I'm going to wait. Um, are we getting that done? I can help out too, but we are going to see that. And this is, this so is an amazing high tech zoom. This, this it takes, is. you know, Tabitha, this not only takes the national teacher of the year, this takes a national hall of fame teacher like Cindy, you, the two of you to pull this high tech <laughs> stuff off. I'm, I'm so impressed. This is so great. Well, let's just say um, it didn't go as quite as smoothly. Um, I think I'm waiting for Eric. Are you going to be spotlighting? Go, let's go ahead and spotlight our three elementary semifinalists. And um, if not, we can. So I'm curious, do you, does everybody see those two faces right now? I see two of us. 
And so I'm kind of waiting. I, I don't want to step on. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. So now I'm just curious if I add Rachel Harder to the group. Do you see Rachel? You see Rachel. Okay, give me the next one, Dr. Watson. The next one is Suzanne Stevenson from Dodd City. I'll find you, Stevenson. I'll find you. No, um, I'm going to do this myself here. This is fun, isn't it? Cindy, Cindy, as you do this, this reminds me, because I'm so old, of Romper Room. You know, I spy. I spy. Suzanne, oh, look at you. Okay. And the third one, Cindy, Kendra Stoppel. Come on down. You're the third semifinal. Look at this. Oh, it's so good. Okay. So one of these three, we've got the right three, right? We're good to go. Here we go. They're all yours, Dr. Watson and Tabitha. Oh, the envelope, the envelope. Oh, it's so exciting. You no, know, everyone, you know, it truly is. You get to this stage, you get to, ju you just get to be on this Zoom today. You're already a winner, and now you're semifinalist. And I'm ripping this open because I don't have a cutter here. And again, Tabitha and I, because, you know, we practice this so much, like never. So we're going to do this again. All right. We're going to shout it out together on the count of three. But we're going to talk now about the region one finalist. You're now like this permanent member of what we call the K toy team from region one on three, Tabitha. One, two, Three, Susan Stevenson. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay, Suzanne. Congratulations to all of our semifinalists. And Suzanne, congratulations to you. And as Cindy said, you're going to get to be unmuted here in a second and give your first speech of many throughout the, this, uh, this next year. Hi, everyone. I'm Suzanne Stevenson. Can you hear me okay? Well, first of all, thank you so much to the K-Toy team, um, everybody that put this on with everything going on in um, our COVID times. Um, thank you to Martha Mendoza, my admin, who nominated me for this and all my wonderful mentors that I've had throughout this. Um, I am so excited and honored to be able to represent Region 1 um, yeah, as part of this K-Toy team and to bring awareness and understanding for our culturally and linguist linguistically diverse students throughout our state and to really fight for their rights and opportunities for equal education. And I'm so passionate about what I do and I am so honored and excited to be able to serve my students even better and to learn from all you wonderful educators that I'm sure I'm gonna get to meet eventually. Um, so thank you everyone, I appreciate it. Congratulations. Oh my gosh. So that was so fun. I don't know about you, Dr. Watson and Tabitha, to watch all the elementary um, nominees as the semifinalists as they were getting named. That was so fun. Um, uh, and the, the, you guys waited in their nerves. You could see it happening. So that's great. So now it is time for the secondary final, um, finalists to be named. So I'm going to we're going to give it a second for everybody, those second, those, uh, here we go, those secondary finalists to be spotlighted with Dr. Watson and Tabitha, and they're do, we're doing some technology magic here. We got Amber joined us. I see Christy. And, and there's Lisa. I lost Amber. Yep. And me and myself. <laughs> There's there's Tabitha. It's like it's like Star Trek. We beamed you up. It is. Oh. <laughs> ah, ah, okay. So we there's Amber. Welcome back. Welcome back. Look at all three of you. you look so great. Uh, we're so proud of all of you. And again, we've got the the paper. We've got, we've got the paper because we're going to announce the Region 1 secondary finalists on the count of three. 
because Tabitha and I are getting pretty good at this. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Ambulance careers! From <laughs> USD 308. Congratulations! Yeah, Amber, there you go. You can have I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying not to like cry here. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so I actually wrote a speech because I can't do anything off the fly. But um, so being a finalist for Region 1 is an honor that I'm so appreciative to be selected for from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I want to take a quick second to acknowledge those responsible for getting me to where I am today. My faith, family, friends, colleagues, those who helped and watched me struggle and learn during my undergrad years my administrators, students and their families, entirety of Hutchinson Public Schools, my hometown, Hutchinson, Kansas, and any other person who crossed my path and helped mold me to the person that I am today. Thank you all for believing in me when I struggled to believe in myself, especially you, mom. Um, I love and appreciate all of you. So um, when I was deciding where to teach after I graduated, I remember being told that sometimes the greatest changes can be made right at home. So I applied for my current position at Hutchinson High School, and I have been forever knitted into the Salt Hawk family. Um, as a finalist for Kansas Teacher of the Year, my message comes in layers. Still, the most significant is that constructing relationships in the classroom is the platform on which everything else can be built. The beauty of, te of teacher-student relationships is that it's foundational. Um, I've been fortunate enough to create a deep rapport with so many students, but I know it takes more than relationships to keep things going. It takes scaffolding, rigor, clear expectations, <laughs> differentiation, grace, and so much more to work together in perfect synergy, um, especially living in the times of a pandemic. Teaching is like a machine, all the parts must work together and student teacher relationships would be the oil that keeps the parts moving smoothly. I believe that the approach we take with our students and the environment we create for them establishes what is needed for the machine to work every day. This year has been like any other. In addition to the health and safety measures we're taking, we must be cognizant about cr the crucial issues affecting our students' abilities to thrive not only in the learning environment, but in the world in which we live. A quote that I have behind my desk is, more in a garden grows than what the gardener sows. And I've never felt it more relevant as I spent part of my year teaching and talking to little boxes with initials in them online. Um, regardless of the chaos and constant changes of this year, you're making a difference in the lives of your students. Continue to plant and water the seeds of knowledge, compassion, and grace. Even if you don't see the fruit of your labor, always know it's never done in vain. Keep up the excellent work and remember the trials we've recently encountered have taught us one incredible fact, how resilient, strong, and amazing Kansas educators truly are. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh my gosh. We are so excited for all, for both of you. Um, and uh, as a side note, Amber is a previous Bueller student. So we are, you know, <laughs> our heart, I know that uh, we, we like to, we like to love up on them. So. <laughs> Congratulations to you both, the finalists, the semi-finalists, to all of our District Teacher of the Year. This is all a win-win. You are going to be continue being celebrated in September um, at, the, at the Leadership Conference. Please attend where you'll be assigned a team and you're going to do your own visits. It is so exciting. Congratulations to you all. We are going to ask our semi-finalists and finalists to stay on after the live stream has ended for a short meeting. We just want to give you some information. Um, to our semi-finalists and finalists. So if you would stay on along with our Region 1 planning team. So we are so excited um, for all of you. We hope that you felt as celebrated and elevated for, and appreciated as we heartfelt. Uh, we really do mean it if, on behalf of KSDE. And I know Tabitha, we are so appreciative of Kansas educators across our state. So thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see everyone in Wichita on September 25th when, that's right, the 2022 Kansas Teacher of the Year is named. Thank you for joining us, and congratulations to all our district nominees.